Oh, oh, really? Oh, God damn it. Oh, I didn't manage to win the, uh, was it Baculites? I think it was Baculites. Oh, no, Giant Orthocone, that's right. It was for VIPs only. Um, I forgot to play it yesterday, but here we are in the Predator World. If I was still in the Predator League, wow. I, 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 I mean, I only played it for maybe half an hour to get to the top to unlock all of the, um, the super DNAs. And it obviously didn't drop down too much. So, ooh, lots of DNA and prion suchuses to sell. Wow, it is an hour later. I actually thought I was just about to record this video and then I realized the uh, the cable I needed to plug my mixer into my computer uh, I'd left at my house. Now, if you don't know, I, I, the play, I, where I live has terrible internet, so I have to go to my parents to record. <laughs> Still, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Been two years. Um, and I, because I had my friends over recording some bro gaming stuff, I had to take the cable from here, and I left it there, so to drive back, I drive back, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> just, anyway, that out of the way, yes, this guy has now been released, new Cenozoic hybrid, uh, and I was wrong about it being a Glyptodon, it's the Deodocorus, which is the cannonball, and it's some of them, uh, it's not the Andrusarchus, it's the other thing, uh, which we unlocked not too long ago, uh, so we can collect all of this, and there they are, already some wolf-looking hyena thing, the Megastotherium, it's all fluffy and ready to kill you. So I think I've still got to get it to the highest level. Um, well, so of course, I've still got to level 40, but I think I've still got to uh, make some other ones. And while we're here, um, for those of you that have tuned in, oh, you got any extra news. Um, there has been news uh, concerning Jurassic World 3 that has dropped. Um, and basically... Uh, it, it's kind of been confirmed that Laura Dern, Ellie Sattler from Jurassic Park, and I guess Jurassic Park 3, is coming back to reprise her role, well, as Ellie Sattler, Laura Dern, that is, um, and also that Ian Malcolm, or Jeff Goldblum, oh, and there we go, it's talking about, <laughs> we're talking about that while a donor gets vi viciously ripped apart, um, uh, Jeff Goldblum is also going to be reprising his role as Ian Malcolm and will be doing more than just standing behind a desk. So hopefully we'll get some interaction between Ellie Sattler and uh, Jeff Goldblum. For those of you that don't know, Jeff Goldblum actually did date Laura Dern. And I think it was around about the time that Jurassic Park came out. So possibly, I have to double check that. But the, 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 um, the whole him flirting with her... Uh, which I think was already in the script, uh, it turned into an actual romantic uh, interest, <laughs> which is just it's one of those things like, wow, really? That actually happened? Okay. <laughs> ah, relationships are complicated, aren't they? Uh, so there we go, level 30. Uh, we need to get three more, so we get one. Speed up, uh, there go all my hard-earned books. Oh, we got a code, code 19. Code 19 now is giving Monolophosaurus DNA, which is good, because um, I would actually, well, you know what? Hmm. I don't know. I'm kind of happy if it's any super DNA, so I may as well get it. But I don't know if I still want the raptor DNA. I mean, we've got a level 20 mono stegotops at the moment. Um, so, uh, we need a lot of mono stegotops to get level 30. And I think I would get level 30, but if it was... I just want two Indoraptors level 20. I don't want level 30. Don't need that. Two level 20 Indoraptors, I'll be happy with. Oh my god, we're on the brink! Can he do it? As long as it actually picks up my fingers. Because sometimes I click it and it just doesn't register it. And the final one would be on the bottom, won't it? It'd be on the bottom. It always is a... Oh, that was bloody close. There you go. An extra 130 DNA as well as a 5 month of source DNA. And we completed it. I think that means you get another one. I... Oh, an Indominus! This is going to be a little bit trickier. To contain a level 30 Indominus. Oh my god, oh, oh, I clicked that, you son of a, I clicked it, oh man, it's not, like, I feel like sometimes my iPad, it's not that, like, my iPad's dirty, sometimes it just doesn't pick it up, and I don't know whether it's just because it's old, or what, just sometimes it doesn't pick up my fingerprint, well, that's okay, we can still get a lot of DNA from this, See, like, there's no reason for me not to get that. I was actually worried it didn't pick that up again. <laughs> Is it going to be the bottom? No, it's not. The last one will be. So one, two, three, four, five, six. No, seven. Just double checking. 60 DNA. And here we go. One, two, three. There we go. Two extra perfects. 
Uh, that's unfortunate because I would have got another perfect there. Two perfect containments. If my finger, for whatever reason, the iPad didn't pick up my finger. Um, and would we got another one? We don't know. We don't know. I, I feel like sometimes it, it's 50-50. Sometimes it does just throw loads of code 19s at me. And sometimes I get none. Um, so feel free to leave it in the comments below. So, also, with Laura Dern coming back, Ellie Sattler, Neil Malcolm, will we see Sam Neil? That is the big question. Uh, I would I would hope we do get to see Sam Neil again. Um, but at the same time, I w I, I'm apprehensive. I do want to see these characters back. But I also don't... I, I'm worried about how they're going to bring them back. Because we've got to be honest, this day and age, fan servicing is a huge selling point. For movies, for uh, video games, anything that's like, oh, that's the old, that's the old character, yay! And we'll bring him back for like a, a pointless part, and uh, there you go, we'll sell tickets. So I do hope, I, I feel like Colin Trevorrow has the Jurassic Park fans' best interests at heart concerning that sort of arena. Um, but at the same time, uh, a bit skeptical. Um, I think until I, you know, until I get to see the movie and see how it's handled, then we can. Uh, Wait, what? Did we... Did I only do... Oh, that's right, because a code 19 came on. There you go. There's some wasted books. Was that 100 or was it just 50? How much? 15. Oh, good. Oh, another 50. So we're on, we're on 30. Well, we're on 45 because we're going to have to speed it up again. Unless... How long does it take? 29 minutes? Yeah, that's probably the length of the video. If that at all. Oh, there's a code 19. Another. Let's... Oh, it's a Trodon. Well, if we can get some super DNA, we may as well, guys. Still have not unlocked the super um, crocodile DNA, even though it's a rare. And actually, I think I've seen it. Or at least people have told me it's not very good. Not very good at all. I don't th I think what it's not supposed to It's not even better than super Kool-Aid, I think. Something like that. Which, I mean, is good and bad. Because at least then we've got more dinosaurs in the roster and and people who aren't maxed out like me have oh, i clicked it you little buggy always with that have i just have i got no fingerprints here should i use a different finger let's use a different finger there you go see flawless flawless and the final one on the button oh ooh. so if you miss one you have to do it twice more to factor in the one that you've missed and then the extra one, I assume, possibly? Well, it's another five model of Asaurus DNA, bringing us to 409. Uh, so what do we have? What do we have? Um, Acanthostega is getting closer and closer, I suppose. We've got 25 days. We've got ages. The thing is, I I'm reading that book, the You're in a Fish, and it does mention about Acanthostega being the first amphibian to form fingers or something like that. It's, it's definitely like a milestone in evolution. Um, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. I, did, I didn't realize that I cut the stake. And there it is in the game. So it does actually hold significant, significant purpose in the paleon paleontology. You know what I mean. Field of paleontology. That's the one. Um, and it's not just thrown in here to be, oh, it's another, it's another amphibian. Let's just find one, Google it, and put it in. So that's really cool. That's really interesting. I'm sure that's why they have it in the facts as well. So we, well, we still have to get a couple more, uh, Cenozoics. Uh, I think they're caverns. Is it a cavern? We have the bear. Uh, I think we have to buy it. So it'll, ooh, we got the hatches. So I cast up, there it is. So I think two more. Could be wrong. I mean, we'll find out once I click this. Uh, yeah, two more. Well, sorry, no, one more. One more. Go on, James, don't make the mistake. So it's a fair bunch of books gone, and we're going to lose even more books when we start having to speed them up in the lab. In the creation lab. Don't know why I put on the accent there, but we're going to keep it now. <laughs> level 20 or level 30? Oh, little wolf on the left was like, Murph! These little paws going up and down. I mean, I say that. Looks bloody vicious. But never just... Oh, really? Oh, come on. How much was that? 30? Was that 30 a pop now? Yes, of course it's 30. Doubling an hour this time, I'm assuming. Collect. Yeah, this game, man, it's got so tough uh, when it comes to, um, like, getting books. Like, Ludia have deliberately toned down books you win in packs, books that you win off missions, books you win off trades. They're gone. And they've also toned down DNA as well. Oh, look at him. He's got a mohawk. Oh, mohawk wolf. So we'll get him to level 40. 
1,038 health and 191 attack. There you go. Watch it, Killer Dodo. No, Monsieur Dodo. Not if it's Clive. So now we confuse. There we go. Oh. Oh, wow. Deodocus looks absolutely massive. Well, 80, 80 bucks. Yep, I guess we'll say sayonara. Look at him. No. Drown in swamps. Weren't there loads of them found upside down? Like, there was loads of fossils of Deodocus or some sort of creature looked similar because they all died in swamps or they fell in and they drowned and they floated and that's why their, their fossils were found the, the certain way that they were. So there we go. We've got a weird looking creature. 576, 180 attack. The Megastorucus. Oh, oh, wow. Well, it's a cavern. Um, I'm assuming it's not going to be too crazy. At level 40, it's probably going to be really good. Oh, the, the teeth on it, though. There you go. 864 health and 270 attack. So it's got, it's got like 80 more attack, but a lot less health. Yep. Ooh, look at him. Aren't you vicious looking... Ooh, but at the same time, look at it. You could stroke it. An armored wolf. Hmm, could be useful for war. Well, let's find out a little bit about it. The shell. Oh no, I didn't get the missions of the last one. Damn it, I could have got some extra books. The shell over Megastaruchus back makes it nearly invulnerable to attacks from above. Well, who, who, well, who's going to attack it from above? Giant bald eagles, probably. I don't know. Could have well have had them. So, what, what do we got? We got the boosted, we got the Oceana, we got the Club Tails, and we got an Aquatic Wave. Both have gold rewards. So, we got two Legendary Packs and six Oceana Packs, which are probably equivalent to a Legendary. Uh, so, we got, ooh, it's Aquatic. Then we got something that's not too tough, and the Oceana is also not so tough. So, yeah, let's, yeah, we're going to do it all today, guys. Strap yourselves in. It's going to be a good one. So, let's go for uh, Udi Mama Dog. Let's do this. Yep, so we've, we've, we've made... How long has this been game, game going on for? It's been going on for like four to five years almost now. And we still have yet to see a Brachiosaurus. Ooh, it'll be, it'll be a fine day when we see a Brachiosaurus. But I don't feel like it's going to happen ever. The thing is, they have Brachiosaurus in Jurassic World Alive. Um, so... It's kind of, because it, I, I was looking, I remember, I, was, I think I was just Googling stuff, or, you know, YouTube searching uh, Jurassic World, um, and a YouTuber, LP Gozzi, um, you, you might have heard him, or, or maybe even seen his videos, he does a lot of Jurassic World, the game stuff. Um, he mentions about how, and it's just something that's been going on for a while, um, that, you know, Brachiosaurus, so even, it's even, like, the thing was, we thought that the reason why... Brachiosaurus was not put into this game was because it wasn't on Isla Nublar during the events of Jurassic World because we didn't see a Brachiosaurus at all. I don't think. It was just a Patasaurus, I think. And then in Jurassic World Evolution, it was like, oh, there it is. <gasps> Will it? Will we see it? Um, and then in Fallen Kingdom, it's a Brachiosaur. And the Brachiosaur only appears, I mean, you could go through the lore and say, well, it was always there. I mean, this is Jurassic World after Jurassic Park, so Brachiosaur was on the island. Um, and, you know, this is canon from a Lost One and all that jazz. But really, really, Colin Trevorrow can retcon anything, I think. <laughs> if we've got to be honest. He, let's, let's also be honest. He, he runs past the other D Jurassic fans to see if it's, it makes sense in the lore of things. Um, you know, we're not going to go on about the Mosasaur enclosure being moved to be closer um, because, to the ocean. Because, let's be honest, it was. Um... Was, it, was there a limit? Did I have to do something here? I feel like I didn't. I feel like it was just, yeah, it was just do anything. Okay. Um, so what was I saying? I cannot remember what I was saying. Also, my, bo my, my bog darked. <laughs> my dog barked downstairs. <laughs> that also threw me. Um, so yeah, yeah, the Brachiosaur, that's right. We've got, would we see a Brachiosaur in Jurassic World, the game now? Lord knows at this point, it's been four years. Answer is probably not. But it also shows that, you know, Colin Trevorrow put in Brachiosaurus, I feel, just to have that sad moment. That was it. He brought it back just for that. To have a... And, like, that's a thing as well. Nostalgia plays such a big role in the cell, like, in movies and money. That's basically when... A, 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 I can't even talk. When a... I was going to say a title or a... You know what I mean? Like a, a franchise becomes nostalgically 
profitable, like Goosebumps, and then you put Jack Black in it, and then you sell, uh, and then you, you, then you package it, and you package it, you're selling it, you're selling it. <laughs> um, but you're not giving us that due credit. Um, so, ooh, what we need, yes, 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 let's go. Um, so I feel like we, the Brachiosaur was put in Fallen Kingdom. Not because it was always on the island, which it probably was, it just was not shown, because they could have very easily shown it, but because they wanted the the nostalgic, oh, look, the first dinosaur she sees, just like Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler, it's a Brachiosaurus, and they, she sort of gets out of the car and want to see it, um, like, in, like Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler do, because they don't believe and they want to see it. And then you have, it rears up, just like it did in the movie, like Jurassic Park, and oh, and then it died, and uh, heartstrings, and nostalgia, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so I, I do hope they don't just bring back Ellie Sattler to be like, hey look, it's Ellie Sattler, ooh, legendary, very good. Uh, Ellie Sattler, yay. I hope she, they do have roles. I'm sure they're gonna have roles. They, I think Colin Trevor knows that going into it. I mean, it's directed by a different director, a female director, actually. Um, which is, uh, I only bring this up not because, oh, she's a girl and a woman and what's, what's she doing there? But because I think it's the first female director that the Jurassic franchise has ever had. So it's, it's, it's you know, it's important to take note. So if, you know, if it was all women directing all of the other Jurassic Parks and it was the first guy, you'd be like, oh, it's a, it's a guy this time. I wonder what we're going to see different. Um, or if there will be any difference because, I mean, really there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be any difference. A director is a director. They, they have a vision. And a person is a person. You know, to be defined by one's gender is a different, is a social topic, and that shouldn't really technically play into a... Well, I mean, it could do. It depends how you see it. Whichever, whatever I say, I will will inevitably, inevitably be crucified for. <laughs> so, we will avoid that topic like the plague, and we will continue to open up all these packs and get lots of food and wasted coin and some dinosaurs to eventually open and... Um, then sell for extra DNA because we're almost on 100,000 now. We're getting somewhere. So defeat nine opponents. Well, then, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So, how about we pick one from the lead from these three, then one from the mid tier three, and then one from the top three? So, let's go for the lowest of the highest, a medium from the medium, and a highest from the lowest. That seems to make sense to me, right? It does to me. <laughs> so let's go. And then in the next battle, we'll pick a medium from the highest, a uh, lowest from the. Well, you know what I mean. It kind of makes sense. So, technically, we should win this pretty easy. I mean, judging by the levels, it should be very easy. Dack of source. Please, your source. I can't remember, I was watching somebody. Um, oh, that's right. It was a, it was a podcast. Um, and they were saying, oh, one person in it. They were. They didn't know. Um, dinosaur background really they, they just commented saying that they found um, what was going on in the ocean far more in interesting and engaging than uh, what was going on on land during the times of the dinosaurs the Mesozoic period um, and I gotta say the same as well and I think it's because we have a fascination with dinosaurs because they were these great fantastic enormous creatures that existed such a long time ago to even comprehend it is Fabulistic. It, it seems like it's something from a story. It's unreal. It's mythological. Um, but also when you take that and then you put it in a... You remove it even further to a realm that we are not even 100% understanding of. The ocean, um, that is. We don't know, you know, the more of the surface of the moon is known about than the bottoms of our oceans or our oceans in general just because well you look at the moon it's kind of known. <laughs> you can kind of see it all. Or discovered I should say. Discovered. Um... And, you know, it's very similar to, I mean, you, so you have the amazing tales of dinosaurs and what happened and these things that exist. And then you've got the ocean. It's like already we're discovering things in the ocean that are amazingly varied and absolutely astounding and stunning to see these weird. Oh, God, like that. <laughs> oh, he's got a little bit of a lip as well. Uh, exist nowadays in this lifetime. I still find it absolutely fascinating. The, the biggest creature to ever exist on the planet, or at least that we know of due to the fossil record that we have going to us, uh, is alive right now. The blue whale, the biggest thing that's ever existed. And you, I mean, you can't see it. You'd have to go out to try and find it. And even then, you know, you're probably not going to find it. Let's be honest. <laughs> the layman isn't going to find it. It's not going to be swimming in your sink anytime soon. Um, I th And then, you know, you've got 
then you think about what was back then, like the giant megalodon, which we still have no fossil record except for its teeth, which only give us, you know, we, we can make reconstructions, but even then it's still speculation um, because sharks are made of cartilage <laughs> and th that disintegrates uh, with time. So a lot of fossil records have to be kind of well preserved and really well preserved. Um, and usually marine reptiles and stuff, they have skele skele skeleton structures. Um, I know, I find it fascinating. Uh, especially with the water stuff, the stuff going on in the water. It's, it's just so... And this is the thing. If you look back to pre-2015 times, because... Ooh, let's go for the lowest of the... Oh no, he was the lowest. We'll go for medium of view, the lowest of view, and then... The medium of view. How about that? That'll do, that'll do it. So... What was I saying? Yes, so if you go to dinosaur films and studies and stuff, before Jurassic Park, um, it wasn't very well known what a dinosaur stood like or looked like. Um, I mean, if you, if you, you, <laughs> people like me will have, or my age anyway, might have books, old books, that depict T-Rexes standing upright like a human being with a tail dragging along the floor. Um, like paleontology was very young and it was still, you know, skeletal structures weren't, you know, they were placed wrong. Like Megalosaurus was placed with its, um, was it Iguanodon? Iguanodon was seen to be a carnivore and it had a horn on its head. You know, it was just these weird things. Um, or Megalosaurus was seen to be a quadruped and then it wasn't. It was a theropod. All this jazz. Um... Can't remember. Yeah, so then you've got... So then Jurassic Park came around and it sort of showed dinosaurs in these warm-blooded light because before we thought they would be cold-blooded because they're reptiles, right? So they would and be share similarities with reptiles, modern-day reptiles. And then Jurassic Park shed a light on it with a lot of research from Jack Horner. Um, still surprised that Jack Horner was part of Jurassic Park and he didn't have the T-Rex just pick at scraps all the time. It actually actively killed people. So that's very, very silly of him, contradicting his own beliefs. <laughs> but of course that was because Steven Spielberg had a part to play in it. He didn't want T-Rex to, he want T-Rex to be this, um, chaotic neutral, I think. Not an evil, not a good, just a chaotic neutral, like a animal would be. Unlike Rex he evolved into with the coming films, which would be the Jurassic World franchise. It is a chaotic good, um, definitely. It eats the bad guys. Um, I, well, T Rex does, Rex does anyway. Um, then you have dinosaurs before Jurassic World. The dinosaur hype from Jurassic Park had died down. Jurassic Park 3 was seen to be a bit of a joke. Um, and then you had like weird dinosaurs that could communicate and they had feathers on. And the, the, the major public was like, what is this? I think. The, the reception to it was just seen as like, oh, okay, whatever. Um, and then Jurassic World, then, then like, I think especially for schools, um, dinosaurs weren't seen as cool. They were like, oh, they were a nerdy thing. Especially me growing up, they definitely were. It was not something to, I mean, even that's Jurassic Park era. It, it, it was a niche thing. Oh God, Megalodon, what's going on with your gums, mate? Jesus. You need to see a dentist. So then Jurassic World came around and everybody was like, wait, yeah, dinosaurs are cool. But unfortunately, of course, these were the dinosaurs that people were used to. If, if Jurassic World had then shown feathered raptors, um, I mean, we don't know. That's a different timeline, whether it would have been as well received. We don't know. They played it safe. They they went for what the, the, the average man, the layman, knows of dinosaurs. That are, they are what looks like in Jurassic Park. Um, and anything different could be seen as a major, like, what even is this for, for the normal person? Remember, it's a movie, so it needs to make money at the end of the D, that beautiful phrase. Um, wow, this is taking ages. My God. I mean, we're getting there eventually, but jeez. My voice is already throw worn out, thrown out. I guess I suppose it's the same thing, isn't it? Bam. There you go. Down you go. Uh, so the Ammonite now. Ammonite shine. There you go. Uh, well, when we did that video revisiting Jurassic Park Builder for the final time, a lot of people were saying, Beavers, what about Cocoa Puff? I completely forgot. I, I, for whatever reason, I didn't see it. Uh, I would have mentioned about the Cocoa. Just keep hopping. That song. That old, that old gem. 
Um, wow, really? I did not need anything. We're just attacking and we're killing everything. We're on the last two now. And they're not really too much better. Wow, okay. Well, that's annoying because then I've got a VIP pack. I guess I, you know what, I guess I'll wait for everything to uh, come back. Oh, there you go. There's another one. Down the last one. Hopefully, the VIP exclusive event is not ending today. I hope it's not because otherwise I've used all my best creatures. Ooh, a five attack? Bless it. It thinks it's scary. Bam! Well, you moon, really? That's all we needed was just you moon. And there's our golden rewards. Oh, yes! All DNA. And I think that was a Microsaurus? I didn't check. Probably was. Oh, my, is my coat falling? Whoop, something's falling. Something's falling. Oh, and it is. Oh, no, never mind. It is. Well, how long do I have to wait? One day. Okay. Okay, one day. I get, oh, 13 hours for Tylosaurus. You beauty. We could probably do that. As long as I get, you know, I'll pay probably like 50 bucks or 20 bucks by the end of tonight and just get some. Or maybe I'll wait till tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, so, Club Tales. What do we have? We have... Uh, does it really matter what I put in? Not really, as long as it's a flyer. And to be honest, we don't have any other battles to do. So I could just put in Pterodactylus by itself and it'll probably win. But always best to put in something really bad. Uh, first, just to make them waste their goes, and then go for a reserve. Whatever comes in next has three turns. And if it's a good enough creature, it kills it in one, and you can reserve for two. Meaning that even in a worst case situation, the next creature for them to come in can still be killed in an all out attack. So I didn't need necessarily to put Tijonga, two Tijongasaurus in, just make sure that I put one Tijongasaurus in at the start. So there we go. So it doesn't matter what he does, even if he blocked for two, he would be dead. Um, he didn't do it, and I still had enough for one reserve and one block. We didn't even need to block for. Don't know why I did it. So now he's got... I think he had five, didn't he? So if he goes for an all-out block, he survived. But he doesn't. And there you go. So much quicker this time. Yes, and this one's for the same kind of pack reward. One herbivore now. So, well, there's the one herbivore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't even care. I just put pellet. Yeah, you, uranium, not just just uranium bombs. It is for no survivors when you. Yep, there you go. SpongeBob references always good. So yeah, whatever happened to SpongeBob? Gee, it went down the pan fast, didn't it? Jeez. We'll we'll save that for another time. That's another rant. <laughs> Oh, I should do a podcast or something. I could I could ramble on. That's probably why you're here, isn't it? You like to listen to me ramble. Oh, there he is. You know, if I keep playing this, if I manage to do YouTube all my life, which I, I don't know if I will, but if, let's say I return to it when I'm old. Can you imagine? Uh, old, old Beaver talking about his stories. When he was young, dinosaurs didn't have feathers. <laughs> Poppycock. What's all that about? Yes. Kill it. I need to work on my old man accent. I've got that one. Then I want the Master Roshi. <laughs> there you go. There's a Master Roshi laugh. Beautiful. So another herbivore. Well, I might as well put in Tijongasaurus. Better use Triceratops. No, no, no. Can I scroll, please? Yeah, thank you. And you. Yeah, you know, I'm so confident in my abilities. That's all we need. They might even be goaded into an attack because it's my last creature. Let's see how this goes. They might be more aggressive. Well, we kill it in one hit and go for two reserves. Whoop. Yeah, my voice is worn out. Wow. So it takes about 30 minutes for me to talk straight for my voice to be worn out now. I'm going to be a mute by the time I'm 30. <laughs> I'm going to be. I'm gonna have to learn sign language to communicate with people. Oh, he went for one block. That's good. And a level 26. Oh my god. Four levels higher than the, level, the first one. Run in fear. Oh, a thousand damage. Beautiful. And we go for five. So what did we get from this episode? Well, we got a new hybrid. We got two legendary packs or golden reward packs. We got six, was it six? Oceana packs. Um, plenty of super DNA. Oh, oh, plenty of DNA actually even. Uh, we lost a lot of books. It has, has to be said. Um, so let's have a look. That that new hybrid we got, because, I mean, that's the reason I put it in the thumbnail, I'm sure. Um, Cenozoic. Let's go to hybrids. Nope, that's aquatic. There it is. So, 15,000. So, still fairly expensive. So, let's have a look. Let's have a look. So, it has... 
basically, Indracoceros is double the price. So let's look at it this way. Um, so for double the price, you would expect to have double the health and double the attack, right? Well, you don't. <laughs> you do not. You... So you could have two Megasterecuruses. And uh, you still have saved thousands of DNA. Just to put that into perspective. So to get... Yeah, but so yeah, definitely. So you would rather get me mega mega So we're definitely going to get level twenty. Fifty thousand DNA. I don't care. I I will I will buy that. We will get to level twenty. We will see where it fits in into the roster. So we'll evolve it to. Uh, can we do a glacier ball? I th I think we'd have to do one of those random balls, wouldn't we? You know what? Let's do that. We'll definitely do a ra one of those random balls. So level twenty. They're always worth it. Ever get a hybrid, make sure it's level 20, especially if the trade-off is not good. So the creatures you fused, it's still not better than. You need to get level 20. Uh, so now at level 20, 1,480 health and 463 attack. And it looks... Looks even grosser. You've got a scabby golden back now. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's find out where another more reward. Ooh, some more food. Megasto Med Megastokurus sleeps 16 hours a day, just like an armadillo, a relative of its ancestor, Deidocurus. What do you mean, relative ancestor? If we fused it, it ain't no ancestor. <laughs> Forced evolution. So we'll go for. Oh, no, we don't do that. We want to do Cenozoic versus land. There we go. Okay, so let's put in only Cenozoic. Let's see where the. There you go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Top, top 10. Almost top five. At level 20. So at level 40, it will probably be top 3, I would say. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, so let's put in some really weak creatures. Because remember, these battles are, I think, scaled to what you put in. So let's make sure that Megastaracus is way overpowered to what we face. Let's see if this works. This cost us 5 bucks. Please, please work. Come on. Ooh, yes! Very overpowered, and because they're different uh, territories, so different land masses, one or different time periods, none of them have an advantage to the other one. And because, you know, we've put in weak creatures, especially in first position, he's probably going to go for two, and it does go for two. And these live battles might be a bit different with how they play out. So, we can go for uh, two hits and kill him, because that's 900, and then factor in the extra bonus. Yeah, he's dead. Okay, oh, look at that, Wolfie! Oh, the snow! Oh, it looks beautiful. Uh, brings in the Gallimimus and cannot kill me. Even with four, couldn't kill me. Um, oh, goes for two. Oh, was an attack from above, though, because I'm, I'm vulnerable to it. So uh, we go for one and then three reserves because it can't do anything. And for the next go, we get to see its all-out attack animation. Oh, Triceratops. Oh, we may as well quit now. We've lost. Triceratops comes in. Jeez. Okay, so are you ready to see its big animation? Can't even remember what it is. Oh, oh, lovely. Oh, oh, the eyes of a devil. Oh, God, those eyes. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> These are the whites of its eyes, and it looked completely crazy. Well, there you go. That's how you use them in that sort of team. If you want to do that over and over, and you've got books to spend. It's up to you. You, you could win books, I suppose. Um, well, I've spent five bucks and traded them for fit, well, a hundred VIP points because I've got the, uh, the loyalty bonus. Subscriber bonus. So five bucks for hundred DNA. So if I, sp oh, ooh, <gasps> can I spin for free? <gasps> oh, do I get a free spin? Oh, I do. So five bucks so far. Got us hundred VIP points and drum roll, please. Uh, that's a food. Yep. Fair enough, I suppose. Not bad. Well, guys. We are going to have to wrap this episode here. I hope you've enjoyed flying and listening to Beaver Airways. And until the next time our paths cross, hopefully, well, I might have read more of that book and I can relay a little bit more of uh, some information to you because I think it's quite fascinating. I think the last video, a lot of people uh, commented about it. Um, I've seen a lot of names. Of course, I see the, the classic like John Sienna. I've seen Fang now. I'm starting to notice that now. Uh, there was another one. I've seen a few. They keep on cropping up. I'm so sorry, I can't remember. I'm terrible with names at the best of time. If you ever meet us, I will forget your name as soon as you tell it to me. <laughs> and if I remember it, I make a point of being like, Ah, I did it! 
So if you enjoyed this video, leave a like until next time. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Uh,